here we go seeing some faces all right so um welcome everybody to the second half of the how things work course so i'll be your lecturer for the um second half my name is tim burns um so uh what I think uh, we can start off doing is I'm just going to give you a little bit of a just some uh, background and um, just tell you how uh, we are going to run the second half of the course. And then after that, maybe we can get started off with the actual material. Um, but uh, all right, so let's see. Okay, sure. So some of you, maybe your camera is not working, but uh, yeah, it's it's nice to see some of your faces because um, you know I haven't uh, met you all yet. So um, and also just to uh, just to know that I'm actually speaking to somebody, not just a list of names in Zoom. All right. So um, let me first just uh, give you a bit of background of uh, how we're going to do things. Maximize. Yes, there we go. Okay, so do you guys see that? Okay, all right, some of you are nodding. Um, so, yes, yeah, so uh, basically, you know, following on from your previous instructor, uh, Pilkings Moon stuff, I think uh, you've been doing mainly things like, you know, mechanics and waves and things like this. Uh, but uh, this second part of the course is going to concentrate more on uh, electricity. And so this is hence the uh, kind of picture that we have here. And so I'm going to take you through just some sort of basic concepts in electricity and um, well, hopefully tell you uh, about how uh, some particular devices work. So um, uh, the way that I'm going to kind of structure this course is really mainly centered around um, particular devices. So, um, you know, you probably, of course, everybody knows electricity is very uh, important in modern day life. But, um, you know, do you know how certain things like, you know, microwave ovens and you know photocopy machines you know do you know actually how they really work right um and so part of the aim of this course is to try to get you to appreciate um you know basically the ingenuity and the basic mechanism of course of how uh these uh kind of devices work and you know i'll tell you a little bit of the physics but but again at not a you know um at the low level of detail that you might normally do in a, in a regular physics course. Okay. Um, any more cameras? <laughs> Is this asking too much? Uh, so a couple more cameras, please, if you can. So, all right. So, you know, you guys have already done half a semester on this stuff. So uh, some of this stuff in the syllabus, of course, you don't need me to tell you about. Um, but, okay, uh, some of the important things is, are things like my office hours. So uh, hopefully when we actually can return to uh, in-person lectures, um, you know, I know that it's not looking very good uh, at the moment. But uh, hopefully later on in the semester, we will return to in-person lectures, in which case uh, these are my office hours. So um, my actual office is in room 1113. It's on the 11th floor. Uh, but actually, um, I uh, ask you to come to office hours in a different room, um, to room 1200. This is where I actually have um, group meetings with uh, my research group. So in room 1200 every day from uh, four o'clock to six o'clock, um, I have these uh, daily meetings. So what you might see if you come during that time is that uh, you'll see a bunch of people, including me, um, you know, with their laptops working away. It might look like we're in a meeting, but actually it's not really like a formal meeting. So don't worry, you can just always walk in and um, I might be uh, talking to somebody, but just, you know, if you hang around in that room, have a seat, then eventually I'll come to you. 
So um, those are my office hours. Now, of course, uh, we're remote. So in this case, if you really want to uh, talk to me, then uh, firstly, email me and then, you know, we can work it out from there. Okay. Um, now, this is the textbook. Um, I, I think uh, Pyo Kyung has, was also basically following more or less this textbook uh, as I will. So um, I'm not going to cover like, you know, the you know all the chapters on electricity i'm just going to kind of you uh you know basically when i sort of prepared this course um you know i just wanted to pick out the things which i thought were more interesting so you know some of the chapters are a little bit more interesting than others and so i'm going to sort of focus more on uh the things which i think uh actually will you know tell you something something that you already don't know so um, so uh, this will be mainly uh, chapters, uh, I think 10, 11 and uh, no, 10, 12 and 13. So that doesn't sound like much, but, you know, some places I'll go on sort of various tangents and, uh, you know, we can explore some, uh, some things which are also not in the textbook, but in terms of the basic material will be coming from those chapters and, you um, Yes, and uh, actually we might, uh, we could, you know, time permitting, we could also do some other topics which are not really in the textbook. Um, so my, you know, uh, area, research area is uh, more in uh, quantum computing. So, um, you know, uh, in chapter 13, you actually do a little bit on quantum physics, but um, of course not at so such a deep level. But um, you know, uh, you know, if, if we want to go into that kind of stuff, I mean, this is also new emerging technology, and uh, I think it's really quite an exciting area. So we can you know take it in in, in that direction too. So okay, um, uh, so course goals. Uh, basically, you know, what I want you to really get out of this second part is obviously to have an understanding of electricity, um, you know, from a practical perspective, of course, you know, probably most of you know something about electricity, but, um, but uh, some of these types of, you know, modern appliances are, you know, pretty uh, ingenious really in, in how they were invented. And in fact, um, you know, even even I didn't really know some of these things until I really prepared these this this particular course. So you know I know you probably knew the basic kind of idea, but I mean some of these things really it's actually pretty remarkable that uh, these things actually work. So um, just to kind of appreciate the ingenuity of these inventions, and as I said, it's sort of going to be focused a lot, you know, around particular. Um, devices and so uh, as opposed to just sort of going through you know chapters and chapters of, of theory I kind of want to sort of feel like there's a particular goal that you're really sort of trying to you know um, understand right so you know say there's a particular machine that you go okay well I don't really know how this works what do I need to know to understand that well you know, I'll need to know this piece of physics and that piece of physics. And then, you know, putting these things together, you get an appreciation of uh, basically how it, how it really works. Um, yeah, so I kind of want to structure it like that. So it's sort of a um, object oriented or, you know, task or goal oriented kind of way. Um, let's see. Okay, yeah, so these are the kind of topics that uh, I aim to cover. So as I said, chapter 10, uh, static electricity. So this is, um, you know, the charges and voltages and things like this. So the, you know, application of this, which uh, we're going to look at first is a photocopy machine. Um, and as part of that, it you know, there's all kinds of uh, interesting kind of physics that is uh, actually involved in photocopy machine you, know, you might think if this is very mundane you know what's so exciting about a photocopy machine but i mean if you actually break it down and try to look at um how actually this thing works is you know there's there's you know several things that you really you know might not really have appreciated so um 
one thing that's there is this uh, corona discharge kind of effect that it takes advantage of. And so we'll look at things like plasma balls, um, laser printers. Um, chapter 12, uh, this is on electromagnetism. So this is, you know, the basics of things like magnetic fields, uh, lenses, laws, antennas, LC circuits. And so uh, the application there, things like radios, mobile phones. So, you know, obviously mobile phones are um, probably the, you know, could be the most valuable thing that, you know, everybody owns, right? So, you know, it's worth to know actually how these things actually really work um and microwave ovens so again you know sounds pretty mundane you know so microwave ovens what's so exciting about that well but you know but how does it actually work um you know and what what is the actual device structure of the device that actually makes it work right? um and uh wave interference uh transformers and uh so the application there are tesla coils so uh in my sort of uh opening picture here this is this is an example of a tesla coil in fact um so actually a lot you know how i wanted to make this course is uh you know quite demo based as well so uh i bought a bunch of uh demos um including a tesla coil so what i was planning to do was to you know get some of these things in in the classroom and you know and fire them up um our physics demos, you know, can sometimes be, you know, not, not so exciting looking, but, you know, some of these things are, are pretty spectacular. So, um, so this, uh, you know, Tesla coil is one of them. Um, basically, I chose kind of the more, you know, kind of interesting, interesting kind of demos in when I uh, kind of was looking out for these. So uh, hopefully we'll do that now, you know, if we don't go back in person, then of course it's not possible. Um, we'll have to make uh, do with um, whatever I can get my hands on, you know, videos uh, just to replace those. Okay, and the last uh, chapter um, in terms of the book is this light, chapter 13. So this is talking about black body radiation, neon lights, atomic spectra. Um, so the application here is uh, fluorescent lights. Um, you know, try to really understand how those things work. Um, and actually, you know, to really understand these things, you have to start to understand quantum physics a little bit. Um, obviously, this course is not going to do, uh, um, you know, like a uh, major um, dive into quantum physics uh, as much as I would like to, actually. But uh, actually, really to understand such things, uh, you do need to know a little bit. So we'll look at things like Schrodinger's equation um, without the mathematics. Um, and that explains things like how, how atoms, you know, what's the structure of atoms and other applications of things like LEDs, uh, lasers, and, uh, you know, semiconductors. Okay, so that's more or less the, the kind of topics that I plan to cover. Um, so in terms of the greater components, I mean, I think you're familiar with this, but just to reiterate, because, you know, different lecturer, different sort of rules sometimes. Um, so, of course, the components are the same, but, uh, um, you know, uh, we will continue having uh, homework and um, homework, I think, will be mainly similar in style to what you've been doing. Uh, which is essentially to, you know, summarize each of the things that you've learnt in a given week and uh, summarize them. There might be some extra questions and then um, the, the system of handing them in will be the same. So, you know, you can hand them in on Brightspace as you've been doing. Um, so with the homework, uh, so you, you've been getting the homeworks marked and then fed back to you on Brightspace as well. Uh, how, how has it worked so far? Um, is the homework you're talking about now the same as before, like um, summary and? Yeah, so I'm saying, yeah, it'll be, it'll be a similar kind of structure, like, you know, um, you know, write a summary and then perhaps a few extra 
uh, questions or something. Um, but I'm just asking, uh, how did you hand in the homework uh, up to this point and how are they marked and you know what kind of feedback did you get? Oh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I was I was gonna talk about the first half of semester. Um, the homework for, for me and um, the the grade is just like, you know, it doesn't change much, and I don't I don't think I I received too much feedback on. I um, think okay, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I guess I I just meant the logistics of um, uh, how you were handing it. You were handing it on Brightspace, and oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yes. okay, yeah. and then you okay, and then you got the answers back on Brightspace as well. Um, what do you mean answers? Well, I mean the, you know, the the mark or whatever, like the- Oh, oh yeah, yeah, the points we get, yeah. True, yeah. on Brightspace, yes. Okay, all right. Okay, so everything's done on Brightspace. Okay, just want to clarify that, thank you. Um, so, uh, yeah, so we'll basically continue the same system for the homework. Um, as you know, you've been doing a, a term project and so there will be also a final presentation so for the second half so i think in the first half uh pil kyung gave you feedback on you know how you can improve your uh, research and um so we'll have the uh, final presentations later on in, in the semester and um you know we'll have a similar format for that as the first half um yeah and then the final exam will be a kind of essay based type of thing. Um, so, um, you know, yeah, well, we can we can talk about that later as, as it, as, as it uh, gets closer to the uh, final exam. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So you're all familiar with this. So no need to go over that. Right. So lecture videos. Um, so, you know, I was, I was told this morning that uh, uh, because of this uh, situation that we have now with uh, people in town. And um, uh, so I was told that I should actually make the le lectures compatible with uh, asynchronous. And uh, actually, I, I actually do this anyway. Um, I tend to just record all the lectures anyway, because I think, um, well, it's easy enough to do, and also it's a good resource just for everybody in the course. And um, you know, actually, so some other people also tend to look at the lectures anyway. So I'll uh, I'll keep on doing that, um, particularly because uh, they've kind of requested asynchronous uh, uh, for the for you know to for the circumstances that we have now. So this will be uploaded to uh, this channel here. Uh, this sort of a mirror Billy Billy site just in case, but um, the YouTube one is the main one. Okay. Um, yeah, and just what I kind of expect for the course, uh, you know, for, for, from you guys, I guess, is um, that, okay, so the lectures, uh, okay, there's no recitation, sorry. Um, but, uh, you know, these are mandatory, so please do attend when you can. But of course, you know, again, because of the, current situation, I understand, you know, if you need to go out for a COVID test or something, then that's fine. Um, and uh, it would be really great if uh, you could also participate as much as you can in the class, because really, you know, from my point of view, there's, you know, nothing more boring than just me talking for an hour and 15 minutes. And, you know, you guys are just sitting there listening. I mean, I think it's boring for you. It's also boring for me it's, it's boring all around so um you know please uh do participate in class uh i think it just makes for a much more lively atmosphere and also um you know uh we, we actually have quite a lot of uh freedom in this course because um you know this is a course that is not like um you know, like a prerequisite for another course or anything like that. So, you know, we can go in pretty much any any kind of direction that uh, that you know you 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 have an interest in. And so, um, you know, well, uh, to 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 an extent, of course. Um, so so you know, we can just discuss things that uh, you want to you want to discuss. And you know, I think even if we 
don't exactly follow the syllabus, it, you know, it, it doesn't, uh, so long that you have, you get something out of it, that's really the main thing. Um, doing homework, of course, please hand it in because, you know, it goes to your, to your marks and, um, right, and academic integrity and so forth. Yeah, I think uh, you guys should be familiar with that by now. So, okay, so um, any, any questions? Um, I have a question about the final essays. Yeah, it takes like 30% of the grade. And uh, I was wondering what should we written in that final essay and uh, what is the word limits for the final essay? And are there any specific requirements for that? Well, um, you know, I think you've been doing, you know, these types of homework questions where you're sort of summarizing things. So like, essentially, I think it will be uh quite sort of similar in style to that because um you know you're sort of supposed to describe things in your own words and um and, and uh you know say how uh you know explain how things things work um so uh it should be sort of more or less in this way but um i, I think we should discuss it a little bit uh close to the date because um uh because you know i mean we're not quite there at the, at the final exams yet so i don't think you really need to start preparing anything now um but uh you know i think if you if you're keeping up with the the lectures and handing in all the homeworks and so forth then i, I think you're in a you know good position okay so uh oh we have a question from bale um yeah so um, since it's a take-home essay, right? Is there kind of a time frame for it, like twenty-four hours, forty-eight hours? Sure. Yeah, I think yes, it will be like a twenty-four hour kind of. Um, I see. Okay. Thank yes. you. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? No. All right. Okay. Yeah. So we've got about half an hour-ish. So. Uh, just things here. All right, so, okay, so I hope you see all that. So, yeah, so we're going to talk about uh, electricity. And so, uh, as you know, as you know, I mean, you know, electricity is real foundation of um, a lot of uh, modern devices and there's actually several aspects to electricity which is you know it can be used in in various different ways ranging from you know uh, making these types of small devices uh, to you know extremely high power devices and so um, so what we're actually going to look at first, so this is, this is sort of our aim. So as I said, you know, the way I want to kind of structure this is not just to sort of teach you a bunch of stuff and then later on, okay, here's an application of, you know, that physical process, but more the other way around of saying, okay, well, um, you know, how does a machine like say a photocopy machine uh, actually uh, work? So, I mean, let, let's see if uh, any of you guys sort of, you know, let's see what kind of ideas you have in terms of like how actually a, a photocopy machine works. So does any of you have uh, any idea? Well, you've got one there in the background. Yeah, I see, <laughs> I see that one. Um, very, you know, very ubiquitous. I mean, everybody's got one in every office, everywhere. Um, but, okay, I mean, probably not many people know actually how, how it actually works, right? Um, and in fact, uh, it turns out that photocopy machines are actually, basically, you can just sort of modify a couple of things there. And it's actually very similar to how laser printing also works too. So, you know, I mean, intuitively, you know, printing, uh, of course, you know, it started off, you know, 
printing press, you know, it was invented, I think, in Germany, you know, several hundred, hundreds of years ago. Um, but, uh, you know, there's sort of a wet printing, but there's also a dry printing, right? So photocopy machines are this type of uh, kind of machine where you can actually print things um, without actually getting like the paper wet, right? And so this requires a kind of, and imagine, you know, if a photocopy machine, you had to, you know, have like wet ink in the photocopy machine, you know, it just would not really be practical, but uh, somehow people worked out exactly how to do this. Um, and so essentially you can have something where, you know, perfectly, you know, beautifully printed things can just be made in, in seconds, right? Um, I mean, you would have also heard of, you know, toner, you know, print, printed's run out of toner, copy machines run out of toner. Does anybody know what toner actually is? Like the color? <clears throat> Right, yes. Uh, it's something, you know, it's basically like the kind of like the color thing, right? But it's it's definitely not ink, right? It's it's like if you've seen it, you put these cartridges in, and it's not like you put in some like wet ink in there. It's all it's all dry, dry stuff, right? Like it's all some kind of it often looks like this kind of black powder. Now, you know, why why is this black powder there? Um and uh and so uh you know. This is actually part of the kind of process of how photocopy machines will work. And, and finally, you know, laser printer. So apparently it has a laser in it. Um, does anybody know how, what the laser is actually doing? Not really. Okay. So, um, so you know, well, I'm glad that... Uh, you guys uh, are a little bit puzzled about this. Um, you know, in fact, if you knew all the answers, then I'd be like, okay, there'd be no point really teaching you uh, how this works. But basically what we're going to do is to try and answer some of these questions um, and figure out, you know, well, what, you know, these things like seemingly very basic kind of questions, like how, how this kind of machine works, you know, what is the laser, is it actually, what's the role of the laser and laser printing, you know, what is this toner and um, exactly how the principle of all these things work. So this is kind of how we're going to start. So we're going to start with uh, static electricity. Now, so this is something you probably, you know, a little bit more familiar with. Um, for example, if you have uh, you know, a balloon, and you rub your hair on it, then your hair starts to stick to the balloon, particularly, you know, in, in winter. Um, in winter, again, you know, if you touch a doorknob, sometimes you'll get an electric shock. Um, you have these sort of children, it's kind of uh, little you know, demos where you sort of have this plastic ruler and you can pick up pieces of paper with it. Or, you know, look at this kid here. Oh, by the way, do you see my mouse? Yes. Okay. You see the mouse. Yeah. So, uh, you know, children's hair sort of stands up on the end. Um, here is a, I think it's a, I think it's a, I think it's a lady. I'm not quite sure. Um, uh, you have all these things stuck to her body. Um, these socks have just emerged from the dryer um, and they're all stuck to, stuck to her body. And, you know, things like plastics are, uh, you know, you would have had the experience that you have plastic and they're all like kind of stuck together, right? So these are all examples of kind of static electricity. And, um, and, and basically the underlying kind of principle of all these things is that uh, charges um, exert forces, right? And so uh, static electricity basically means that you have, well, electricity implies some kind of charges. So these are like positive and negative charges. And, um, and, and basically it's static because as you know, you know, electricity that's coming out of uh, your, your walls are all flowing 
Um, whereas this is an example of electricity where it's like, it's not moving, right? It's just sort of sitting there and um, it's, it's, it's doing something and creating all these effects, which I, um, which I talked about. So, uh, you know, the underlying principle, you know, if you break it down, the most basic thing that you need to sort of understand here is that, well, charges uh, exert forces on each other. So uh, if you've got plus and plus charges here, then they will repel, minus and minus, they also repel, but plus and minus attract. Okay, so I think probably most of you are familiar with this. Like, I think um, even if you don't do physics, then you're gonna be um, heard of this somehow, right? So, uh, you know, so why does, for example, this child's hair stand on end? Well, basically, you know, what, what happens is that um, there is a buildup of charge uh, in, this, uh, in this child that is sliding down uh, a slide, right? And so by the time this kid is going down the slide, somehow this child has accumulated a lot of charge on them. And now uh, these charges can um, accumulate sort of anywhere in the body human body is sort of a mildly conductive kind of uh, thing because basically, you know, water is slightly conductive and, you know, things like your sweat and all these things uh, actually make the water even more conductive, right? So it's, it's not a super good conductor, but it's a reasonably, it's an okay conductor, right? And so, but meanwhile, you know, it's, it could be any, everywhere in your body, but if it accumulates somewhere in your hair and your hair is like, you know, dry, then these uh, electrons, these charges on the, on the hair will actually sort of start to repel each other. So now if all these strands here all are covered in these uh, charges, then they want to sort of repel each other. And in order to repel each other, they, the, you know, your hair starts to stand on end. So basically, you know, it's a direct observation of this kind of thing where actually that the hair you know energetically it's much more favorable for the hair to actually stand on end go against gravity because there's actually so much charge actually on the hair that it actually would prefer to even go against gravity and stand up on air rather than actually succumb to gravity and then um, you know fall, fall back down so, uh, you know, that's, of course, the I, kind of I, basic I idea. A, I have a question. Is yeah, that, sure. Um, why are those like negative electrons being charged in those in the uh, dry area? Uh, what if it, it is not dry? Why the electrons won't be charged? Yeah, right. So, so basically, you know, the, the dry and, and wet effect makes a difference because Essentially, it gives a um, a route for the charges to actually escape, right? So, if if it's like a, you know summer when everything is very humid, particularly in Shanghai, then before these charges really accumulate on your body, there will be some kind of path for it to actually escape somewhere else, right? Because these charges they they basically don't want to really be close to each other, right? This is why it's, it's kid's hair is standing on end um, and so if there is a place that the charges could go such that you know they're not so close then they would go they would go there but thing about you know if it's dry and if it's in winter it's just that these charges uh, they don't really have a conductive path to actually flow anywhere else right um, now in in summer these charges, uh, because everything's a bit more damp, everything's a little bit more conductive, right? So, you know, ex sort of extreme example would be like, you know, in winter, all your clothes are sort of made of plastic, but in summer, you know, it's like your, your clothes are like metallic, right? Then if your clothes are all metallic, now the electricity will just flow somewhere else uh, and they don't need to be so close together, right? But um, in winter, they're sort of forced to be. So I hope... I hope that answers your question. Um, yeah, okay, so uh, here's another example. So in this case, 
um, what do you think is happening? So, you know, uh, in, the, in the case of the child, uh, as we're going to talk about this a little bit more, a few more slides later, but in the case of the child, what happens is that actually the, the kid sliding down the slide is like what is generating this charge. And then, you know, I'll explain a little bit of like why that happens a bit, but, um, but uh, basically it's, it's because the kid is sliding down. And as you know, if you start to rub your clothes uh, together, then uh, this somehow generates static, right? Now, in this case, these ladies here, um, they're, not, they're not rubbing any clothes or anything like that. Does anybody have any idea what might be happening here? No guesses? Charges from one person conducts to the other. Mm. Yes, uh, that's not a bad guess. Um, but I mean, then that would sort of imply that like one of them had to be like super charged up. And I mean, normally ladies are not really super charged up. Is there like um, some, you know, abnormalities in the environment? Seems mm. like two two people yeah. are both having those like standing hair. Yes, uh, that's very 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 good guess. Uh, very close. So, what kind of abnormality do you think? Should be something related to electron. Mm. Yeah. Right. So you're very close. Um, yes, Owen, yes. So Owen sent a lightning symbol to everybody. Uh, and that's exactly right. So actually, what uh, if this ever happens to you, right? If you're standing out in the open. And your hair starts to go on, uh, go up on its ends like this. Uh, what you should do is to run, okay? Because lightning uh, will probably strike there very soon. So this is like uh, an early warning for potential lightning strikes. So uh, these people don't look particularly um, scared or anything. In fact, uh, they look like they're gonna take a selfie and then show their friends. Um, probably not, not, a, not a really smart idea because you might not survive it. So um, what, uh, like, what is happening? Yeah, here we go. So this is uh, the kind of thing that's actually happening. So, uh, you know, lightning is of course coming from um, clouds, right? So. Uh, some charge charges in the cloud um, and basically these charges this is an example of uh, static electricity and uh, it's actually very interesting how sort of this actually works uh, you know I mean lightning is very common occurrence but you know if you if you didn't see it actually you wouldn't really think that this would really happen but um it happens you know a lot right obviously uh everywhere in the world there's constantly lightning flashes occurring everywhere so uh within a cloud what is happening is that uh actually the negative charges tend to accumulate towards the bottom and uh towards the top actually there's a accumulation of uh, positive charges and so the kind of things that can happen, um, so most lightning actually occurs within, within the clouds and it kind of makes sense because 
you know, you've got a bunch of positive and negative charges uh, sort of separated in the same thing. So, uh, you know, basically, well, okay, well, you know, these charges uh, um, can't actually physically move towards each other, but uh, they, you know, this creates a huge kind of voltage within, within the cloud. And, you know, this is a very unstable situation um, electrically speaking. So uh, what, what happens is that actually there's so much voltage that uh, a spark happens and lightning is nothing but a giant spark, right? And um, so the spark can happen with lightning in between the clouds. So charges can go from, from this negative area to the positive area. So this is like intra-cloud uh, lightning or they could go from you know cloud to cloud, so there could be uh, you know lightning happening here. Or if the cloud happens to be very close to the ground, then finally the uh, the lightning can actually um, can actually hit the ground. Um, now a puzzle which uh, we're going to resolve a little bit later is so we've got all this negative charge here. Um, and here it says there's a bunch of positive charges, but uh, why, why would the why would the ground be positive? The ground, you know, shouldn't shouldn't the ground just be like, you know, zero? Does anybody have any idea? All right, so um, we will resolve that paradox uh, maybe a bit later. So, um, so another puzzle is, uh, you know, why do these charges form? So, you know, you've got positive and negative. So why on earth would these charges actually form in the, in the first place? You know, actually, you, you know, I'm not really a chemist, but I would really not really expect this from uh, you know something that's obviously quite wet, right? So if it's if it's quite wet and uh, you know cold, you know I, I wouldn't really necessarily expect that this would actually generate a lot of charge, but apparently it really does, right? And so actually the mechanism is is quite interesting. Um, essentially, what happens is that within the cloud there is uh, you know a lot of kind of turbulence, right? And so there's like a lot of basically particles, which are also which are like going up very high in the atmosphere. And there's also a lot of particles that are going down, right? And there's this so-called uh, uh, thing called a graupel. Graupel is basically like a hailstone, but it's um, more like mushy, mushy hailstones. It's very like soft hailstone. So not like hard, like that, you know, that, uh, that you get when it hits the ground, but um, but essentially because a cloud is, you know, very high altitude. So there's going to be, you know, even for like in summer, uh, a lot of these particles are going to be, um, you know, icy, right? So because high in the atmosphere is cold. And so you have a lot of these uh, things which are heavy pieces of graupel which are like falling down. But then also you've got this huge updraft, which is, you um, uh, sending all these uh, ice particles up. And then so you, because of this, this graupel is very heavy, it sort of falls, but then this, uh, these particles are quite light and so they rise and then they sort of bump into each other a lot. And when they bump into each other, they exchange charges. And then by the time you have all this, you have like a positively charged top and a negatively charged bottom, um, just kind of, actually crazy. I mean, I, I, you know, I would not really expect such a thing to really happen if, you know, I didn't see it. So, um, there's actually a pretty good video here that actually explains this. So let me just put this video on. Um, you actually hear the audio from the video? Okay. Yeah. All right, so let's just have a look at this video. Actually, do you see the video? Oh, you don't see the video. Okay, I'm, I'm sharing the wrong thing. Um, 
Okay, now I think I should be sharing the right thing. section of the billowing and shaving through the Nimbus cloud has a lot of turbulence. Within the storm, there's strong fast moving air going up, updraft, and rapidly moving air going down, downdraft. Updrafts move small, supercooled water droplets and ice crystals to the top of the storm, while downdrafts cause heavy hail to drop towards the base of the cloud. Slightly warmer temperatures soften the surface of the hail, creating soft hail, known as grapple. Grapple colliding with small upward moving water droplets and ice crystals results in the transfer of energy, a positive charge at the top of the storm cloud and a negative charge near the bottom. As the positive and negative charges separate within the cloud, an electric field is generated between its top and base, which strengthens over time. Since our atmosphere is a strong insulator that slows down electric flow, an enormous buildup of energy is used to create lightning. When the electric field in the storm charges to its maximum, the atmosphere becomes overpowered, resulting in lightning. There is a weaker electric field that develops between the cloud base and the Earth's surface. The base of the cloud contains negative charges, and the ground or tall structures contain positive charges. Since opposites attract, these charges exchange energy, resulting in the bolt of lightning. About 75 to 80 percent of lightning occurs within the cloud. Thunder always occurs when there is lightning. Thunder is an acoustic shockwave. Right. I think we I think we know about thunder, so we'll skip that part. Yeah. So I, I just wanted to show you that because I think with an animation it sort of gets the point across a little bit better. So yeah. So basically, you know, you have these particles which like heavier particles, and you know, because it's heavier, it will it will kind of fall. And these lighter particles all like going up to the top, and all this kind of rubbing is creating this uh, you know imbalance of charge. Okay, so that's um, that's uh, you know explains a couple of things, but it still doesn't really explain um, everything really. Uh, so you know this this is kind of the process that you should really go through in in science when you um, you know you try to analyze a problem, right? So like quite often you know people say yeah yeah i understand how stuff works you know it's just like you know if it's like lightning yeah it's like just charges you know just charges but then you know you can always go down a step further and say okay yeah but that actually raises a lot of other questions which you know are actually not actually always easy to really understand right so for example um so apparently you know, like rubbing things produces static, right? But but why? Like, why why should rubbing things create static? I mean, does anybody know? Okay, puzzled looking faces. It's good. Um, another question is like, okay, back to this lady, I think. Um, so uh, these socks, right, out of the laundry, they they all stuck to this lady. Um, but so why didn't they, why doesn't that like repel some of them? You know, I mean, if, for example, you might try to explain the fact that they stuck because maybe this lady is somehow negatively charged and the socks are positively charged, right? But then uh, what if, you know, what if the charges were the other way around? Would you would you get the socks kind of flying off the person, or you know what? I mean, apparently it's always like always attracts, right? So why does it always attract as opposed to um, repel? Um, that's sort of another sort of small puzzle. Um, another puzzle is okay. So we've been talking about all these charges. So you know, what actually are these charges that uh, we've been talking about? So like. You know what, what kind of charges because it could be all kinds of different charges are they just all electrons and um if it's positively charged things now you probably know electrons are negatively charged but so positively charged what so what what kind of positively charged what what are these things exactly um and 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 another question might be like so when do sparks actually really form um so uh, what are the conditions that you need for sparks to form? Another question might be, uh, so you, you might 
know that actually so just when you give yourself a shock like in winter right you just when you've got your down jacket and then somehow you touch something and it gives you a shock um those those shocks can actually be in the region of like a thousand volts right now a thousand volts sounds like it's actually quite dangerous right like if you put your finger in the um electricity that's only 200 volts in china right and uh if you if you do that long enough then it will kill you now apparently this thousand volts um doesn't really kill you. I mean, it sort of gives you a little bit of unpleasant uh, shock, but uh, you know, nearly not enough to kill you. So, so what, you know, why doesn't it kill you actually? If it's uh, such high voltage, then why doesn't it kill you? Anybody know about that question? Anybody know why? Is it because like our feed is connected with the ground? Mm. So it might be uh, conducted. Um, that's, that's a very good guess. Very good guess. Um, but actually, uh, I think that, um, uh, in fact, you know, if your feet wasn't connected to the ground, then it might not even uh, sort of the, the spark might not even come to you. And in fact, I think the reason why the spark is coming to you is because the spark is trying to is discharge itself. So, uh, yeah, so I think I think there's still some open questions there. Of, um, yeah, because a, a thousand volts actually is going through you uh, with your feet connected to the ground or, or not or whatever. Um, and so either way, you're not dying. So th there must be something more to it. Here's something in the chat. Time of discharge is too short. Yeah, that's a that's another that's a very good uh, another another good uh, point as well. Yes, so that. Time is going to be very, very short. But on the other hand, you know, imagine sticking your finger in the electricity outlet just for a second. I mean, okay, maybe you might not die from a second, but it's, it's going to be much more unpleasant, even though it's 200 volts as opposed to 1,000 volts. Right? So there's still a couple of things that I think uh, we need to understand. So, all right, so we'll, we will go through that. Um, See, let's start the next kind of thing. Uh, yeah, I, I think I think uh, instead of starting the next one, we can just just leave it there. So um, we'll we'll take off uh, from that point on Wednesday. But uh, any other questions? Anybody want to ask? Will this slide be uploaded to the Bright Space? Sure. Yeah, I can upload it. Yes. Thank you. Um, in terms of the lighting question, I'm still a little bit not sure why the people's here are standing. How? Oh yeah, like... right, right, right. Uh, we will we will come back to that. But uh, oh, okay. But basically, um, roughly speaking, the uh, the answer is that okay, the people are standing here, and the lightning is coming. From above, and basically this area is, is going to be very heavily positively charged. Okay. And then that positive charge is sort of accumulating on these people. And just like the, the kid here, okay, in this case it was negatively charged, but the same thing if it's positively charged, um, the positive charges are strong enough to basically lift up the hair and, and repel. So that's so it's like kind of attracted by the cloud. That's right. Yes. Yes. So actually, you're already yeah, you're already um uh, halfway to answering the uh, the uh, the effect. Yeah. So um, but uh, yeah, I mean, the immediate reason why the hair stands up is basically because of the charge accumulation on the people, and in fact, everything around here. So this whole region here is positively charged. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right. Great. All right. So. Uh, then I think we'll leave it there and I will see you on Wednesday. Okay. Okay. No problem.